Hi, uh, thank you for having me. My name is Shirley Mun. Uh, I'm a professor of nanoengineering. I hold the Disabled Endowed Chair Professorship in Energy Technology, and I co-direct the Institute for Materials Discovery and Design with Professor Mike Saylor. You have heard from Mike um, what motivates us to work together as a materials cohort and how, why our mission and goals are in perfect alignment with UC San Diego's commitment to find, finding solutions for some of the world's most pressing challenges. Now, uh, let me spend the next few minutes uh, to present to you how I envision uh, we can build the innovation ecosystem on this campus, from fundamental research to workforce training, uh, in the next decade, by 2030, if we do this right, our faculty and the campus will be recognized for discovering and designing materials that humanity needs. Our students will be leading some of the most innovative institutions and the companies, and the transformative work done here will improve the quality of the life for people all throughout the world. Materials has always been the defining terms for human history. From Stone Age to Bronze Age, Iron Age, Semiconductor Age, throughout the 5,000 years of human history, materials have always played critical roles in improving the quality of life. There's a famous saying, we do not go out of Stone Age because we run out of stone. We move forward towards future technology platform because the materials human made enable us to be more efficient and more productive and supporting more human lives on the planet Earth. In the near future, there are three materials driven societal changes that will happen. First, automation, like semiconductor industry, we will see that Many advanced manufacturing uh, platforms will use highly automated engineering systems, like robots. Second, electrification of everything, including our personal vehicles, buses, trucks. And third, going 3D, thanks to the 3D printing of matters, from metals to living organs, and thanks also to our ability to predict the lifetime, we will have design tools that will include the time as one of the scale bars and to enable true 4D design of new materials. There's a famous saying by Arthur C. Clarke, one of my favorite authors, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So let me quickly share my own personal journey as a material scientist when I was very little, I was absolutely fascinated by airplanes. The metals that are made so light and so strong that enable us to fly further than the birds. When I was an undergraduate student, I experienced the moment in my scientific career where some oxides made of copper, cobalt, oxygen can transport electrons at liquid nitrogen temperature without any resistance. And this magnetic levitation process or uh, phenomena really locked down my passion for material science and engineering. And today, as I'm leading one of the battery research groups on this campus, I want to create the same magical moments for people. So for instance, the batteries made on our campus, we can cut them, we can abuse them, these are the batteries that will bank all the electrons from wind or solar and will never catch fire. So it is really truly exciting to think about what material science can do for our future society. And today, I would like to invite all of you to think about all the major challenges humanity are facing and how materials research will make a true impact in solving some of the most challenging problems. Climate crisis, public health crisis like the one we're facing right now, 
Energy Water Food Equality. Think about by 2030, we will have 8.5 billion people living on the planet Earth. More than half of them are in the densely populated developing countries. We will have about 6 billion smartphones and smart tablets connecting people through wireless internet, 5G, or even beyond 5G. And we have billion cars. And let's think about how many batteries we, how many batteries we will need to enable electrification and to enable e-mobility of our society. And I gave a few numbers here because people always hear about the story of gigawatt factory. In fact, one gigawatt factories are only able to produce 10,000 Tesla Model X. So in order to enable all the billion cars to be electrified, we need many, many more gigawatt factories. And we need all the talents in material science and engineering to think about how we can build enough batteries to enable the transition of our renewable energy uh, technology platform. So this is how um, Professor Mike Saylor, me, and the co whole cohort of material science and engineers on this campus decided the top priority research for IMDD. Information, particularly materials for quantum information. This is a very, very challenging task. However, being able to do that will enable human societies to communicate safely without consuming huge amount of energy for enabling the current way of doing the computing. The supercomputers, the clouds, the data bank, they are consuming huge amount of energy. I myself have been really uh, focusing on the energy and water nexus, how we can actually design better materials to enable energy storage and conversion more efficiently. And because of the water crisis in California, we can also think about solving the energy crisis will help us to do water desalinations in a much more reliable and economically viable way. The third priority has something to do with how engineers can come out, and scientists and engineers can come out, engineer the living matter, utilize nanoimmunotechnology to think about how we can actually tackle the public health issues so that we never get locked down again for what we're facing today because of the coronavirus. So all those areas, material scientists and engineers can really make an impact. So based on my own experience, I will just share one story uh, based on my own research group, how we were able to design materials from electronic level, atomic level, design better materials that can store and convert energy, and all the way to build particles, mesostructures, structures, and system level engineering to enable better batteries. This is my team uh, at uh, San Diego now, but throughout the last decade, we have trained the workforce uh, for the battery and EV industry. Many, over 70 has already graduated and about 30, 40 is still currently under training. We've published many top leading peer reviewed journal articles in science and nature, etc. But I would say uh, very proudly that we were able to bring the fundamental science to the societal impact in the very short amount of time. Uh, we have spun out a few startup company uh, such as South 8 Technology that has already gained the momentum in the local San Diego community. Um, I would also like to share a story with you about how my experience working with local San Diego company called Maxwell Technologies since 2016, uh, working on dry electrode process, which will change the way how traditional batteries are made. And in 2019, this company was purchased by Tesla. And uh, I think everybody heard the news that Tesla will become SP500 soon. In fact, uh, besides the Illumina story Mike has shared, and we all know how Qualcomm has been successful in San Diego, I would say that uh, uh, in 2021, will be very exciting to see 
the Tesla San Diego uh, becoming the uh, one of the SP 500 companies. So this kind of um, experience made me truly believe that we are a unique campus where we will be able to bring things from fundamental science to applied technology platform, train the workforce, and bring our results to impact the society uh, within the short time frame. And to solve some of those pressing global challenges, we really, really need uh, this kind of mentalities where we, on our campus, we will be able to do that. So let me now share with you some of the forward-looking uh, uh, currently ongoing research. Uh, there's many things I would like to talk about, but I will just pick one from our junior faculty, Professor Monica Allen from physics department, who just joined us not long ago. We were very fascinated by her research on quantum devices and quantum imaging, uh, as we foresee that the future of quantum communication, quantum sensing, quantum computing are going to change the way how our society operates. And the materials challenges that has something to do with the growth of those topological materials. And we need the faculty, the students, and the appropriate facilities to enable this type of cutting edge research. Uh, because of the time limitation, I won't go through all the fascinating stories. I'll be very happy to share more, but this is our team at the IMDD. I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to imagine a future with us and create more of such magical moments that I have uh, shared with you in my talk. Uh, I truly believe that material science and engineering will give us a bright future together. Thank you very much. Thank you.